Hello YouTube, Caitlin here, and do you know how to cosplay? So I did this crazy thing where I decided four days before Halloween that I was going to go all out cosplaying San from Princess Mononoke for Halloween. And madness ensued. So if you ever want to cosplay Princess Mononoke or you just want some general tips on cosplay, here we go. Step one, I started by doing a bunch of research. I looked at lots of pictures online, stills from the movie, people's fan art, and other people's cosplay versions of Sun. Truthfully, the reason that I didn't start my costume until so late was because I spent several weeks doing research. Step two, decide on the costume pieces that you're going to make or buy. So the pieces that I needed were the mask, the spear, the headband, and armbands the fang necklace, the earrings, the tunic, and the fur cloak with ears. San also wears some slouchy ankle boots and a blue tunic underneath her white tunic, and I had both of those already, so I had a great base for my costume. Step three, gather supplies and start your project. I started with the mask because it was definitely the most complicated, and I relied heavily on tutorials from Ruby Rocks TV, which I'm gonna link over here somewhere, because she does a great cosplay of San where she like goes through everything, and that's kind of the base at which I started my cosplay. For the mask, I started with a cheap strainer from Walmart, and use Mod Podge to paper mache strips of newspaper around it to make the base of the mask. Things I learned here is that you need more Mod Podge than you realize. The first three or four layers of mine didn't have very much Mod Podge, so they didn't stick together or even dry that well, which made a mess later in the process. But yeah, two parts Mod Podge, one part water makes much more sense now. Like, really do that. And you should do about six to ten layers, letting each layer dry in between, or at least letting every two layers dry. Then when it's all dry, it's time to cut out the eyes and mouth. I used a printout of the mask, and you can just Google Princess Mononoke mask and find it. And I used it to stencil the circles on in the appropriate places, and then I used an X-Acto knife to cut them out. Again, I had a little trouble here because of my not very well Mod Podge layers in the very beginning. Then I used paper clay, which I learned is air drying clay. Now this is the part that if I did it again, I'd probably do it differently because I think that I made this layer of clay too thick and that made the mask a lot heavier than I would have liked it to be. Now, let it dry for 48 hours or as close to 48 hours as your four day timeline will allow. Then you paint it. I used a bright red for the face of the mask, a goldish brown for circles around the eyes and mouth, and white for the face markings. And now, bam, mask. Also cut out the little triangle pieces from the mask picture that I had and just glued them on. As far as attaching the mask to your head, Ruby Rocks TV added a ribbon that she glued in on the inside and then like tied it around her head. And another thing I saw actually um, has like you put holes around the top and then you sew it into the top of the hood of the cloak and that holds it on there. And that's the one I tried to do, but the mask is just too heavy. And so like in order to push it up and leave it on my head, I felt like I was wearing this like really weird like army hat that just, it just was not cool. So I, I just kind of carried it for the night. Now let's do the spear. I hemmed and hawed on this one for a while before I finally decided that I was going to cut a triangle out of a piece of styrofoam and then cover it in white duct tape to make the blade of the spear. For the base, I got a thick wooden dowel and covered it in black duct tape. And then I added a bit of red duct tape right below the blade. To make the markings, I used red duct tape and cut off a piece and put it on parchment paper, or you could use wax paper, whatever you wanna do. And then I drew the markings on the back of the parchment paper. And then I used an X-Acto knife to cut out the markings precisely and then stick the pieces onto the blade. Ta-da, spear! The only thing that I would have to say is maybe not to hot glue from wood to duct tape because duct tape and hot glue don't really work that well. It's a little bit, it's coming apart now. <laughs> the headbands and armbands were pretty easy. I bought some black headbands at Walmart along with a sheet of black felt and a sheet of white foam paper. I would have used white felt, but they just didn't have any, and the foam actually came out kind of working well. Anyway, I cut out some small circles from the felt and the white foam and then hot glued them together and then onto the headband. Pretty simple, right? I played around a bit with the armbands. I cut some strips of black elastic and then I had these little Velcro things. So I'm like, oh, I'll just Velcro them together and it'll be great and it'll fit on my arm. They worked for like 30 minutes, but then they would start falling off my arm. So I had extra headbands and so I just like double wrapped them around my arm and pulled them 
up and that's what I did and it was fine. They didn't fall down anymore. For the necklace, I made it with paper clay and black suede strings. I rolled thick snakes of clay and then cut them into small rectangles to make the beads. I ran a thick needle through the center to make the opening for the string and this is really important because you want to make sure that this opening is big enough to get the string through when it's, everything is dry and it's not like movable anymore. For the fangs, I rolled out a thick piece of clay and then cut triangles and ran a needle again through to make openings for the string. I let it dry for 48 hours and then painted the beads black and the fangs white. It took about two coats of paint, but it probably could have used more if I'd had more time. Finally, I strung them together on a suede cord and then I attached them to the cloak with a safety pin on either side. The earrings came from the white foam too. I used a cup to make circle impressions in the foam and then cut it out with a rotary cutter because rotary cutters are the best and I am so glad that I bought one and you should absolutely invest in one if you ever wanna do anything to do with crafts. I then poked a hole in it and added a jewelry ring and then an earring thingamabob. I don't know what the like terms for these things are, but that's, you can, you know what I'm talking about. The tunic was another easy piece. I bought an extra large men's shirt at Walmart and then used the rotary cutter to cut out the neck, armholes, and along the sides so it's only attached by a thin piece of fabric below each armhole. Voila! Simple tunic to add to your dress. And finally, the cloak. This is the part that I dreaded the most. The tutorial that I watched uses a fur jacket that already has a hood and these little ears that you can attach your ears to, so it just makes the whole process a lot simpler. But I actually went out and bought a yard and a half of this super soft but really shedding white furry fabric. And after doing a lot of research on how to make a cloak simply, this is what I came up with. What you do is you fold the fabric in half with the first side inside and lay it out flat on the ground. And then you draw this shape onto the fabric on one end. It's generally kind of rectangular shaped. I don't have any measurements for you because I just eyeballed it, but this is going to be your hood. So think about how big your head is and go from there. You cut around your line and then you cut straight across the fabric so that you're back to having a rectangular piece of fabric. Now for the little bit of sewing that this involves. I used white yarn, not any kind of thread. And this probably seems non-traditional. It's something that I have always been doing since I was a kid because I just didn't always have thread, but I would always have yarn for some reason. But I love using yarn for little projects like this because I feel like it's sturdier in this kind of situation. It just helps you get through a large area of hand sewing a bit faster. So you sew around the curved side of the hood. It's just a basic stitch where you kind of like loop around the fabric and you can tell that I'm not like a sewer or a crafter person because I have no idea what the name of that type of stitch is. And then because I didn't feel like sewing anymore, I used fabric glue to attach the hood to the rest of the cloak. And then I trimmed off the excess fabric on either shoulder so it curved down nicely like a cloak. And I also actually cut off a bit of the cloak's length because I felt like it was too long for me. I added a tail with some of that scrap fabric and again, I used fabric glue. Then for the ears, I used red and black felt. I drew and then cut out my ear shape on a piece of paper and then used it as a guide to cut out the ear pieces. I made the black pieces the same shape but just slightly longer than the red pieces so that they would show behind the red in your ears. Then I used fabric glue again to attach the ears to the hood. Yay, fabric glue! And then after you're done cleaning up all the random fur that's been shedding around your house, you have your cloak! Woo! We finally made it to step four, which is getting all your pieces together and then attaching your cloak. Like I talked about earlier, I used the necklace as one point to attach it, so it was right around my neck and that felt really secure. And then I also attached it with safety pens again right on my shoulders and I attached it to the tunic and through the dress too. So it had two layers that it was going through. And then of course there's the makeup. I pretty much followed this tutorial and it tells you to use red lip liner and red lip, like liquid lipstick to make the fangs on your face, which is what I did. And I would actually recommend using actual face paint because I did it this way and it never actually dried. It was always just kind of moist and if I touched my face in any way, even just like a little brush, it would smudge and I didn't like that at all. So face paint, definitely face paint. And step five, enjoy. I was so super proud of this costume and for doing cosplay for the first time. And I'm really glad that I get to share it with you guys. Pretty much one of the major deciding factors in me making this costume four days before Halloween was like, hey, I could film this and send it to my viewers and kind of inspire them to do cosplay too. As always, 
always, I've learned some things, and there were things that I would probably do differently, like the lip gloss on my face. That was not a good idea. But now I've got all this craft stuff, so I've got to do another cosplay. So what do you think? What should I cosplay next? Tell me down in the comments, and remember to like, favorite, share, and subscribe if this video made you smile. See you guys next Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs>